testing this out. Let's see if it works. All right. Cool. Give me one sec, guys. I'm just setting all this up. We had some technical difficulties. Give me one sec, guys. I'm just setting this up real quick. And then we'll get in some live trading. Get started. Give me one sec, guys, and then we'll get into everything. All right, I will be back in one second. Ah, bet we are here. We are here. We are here. Yo, can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Put something in the chat if you can. Um, because I'm trying up a new setup. I was just live on TikTok and these motherfuckers banned me. <laughs> so YouTube, guess what? Hey, this is just here for educational purposes only. I'm uh, not a financial advisor. So if you guys can hear me, put something in the chat. Um, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. 
So, yeah, man, I mean, make, I want to make sure the audio is good, like the background music's not too loud, and if everything's all good, we can get into it. <laughs> I said TikTok couldn't handle the source, bro, they couldn't. I literally started dropping gems, and these motherfuckers just said, boom, deleted. <laughs> like, alright, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> cool, so let's kind of get into it, man. Obviously, first things first, you know, when it comes to me trading, before I even go to the market, Right before I even go to the market and try to turn this down a little bit. Um, before I even go to the markets, man, and actually try to trade, the first thing I always do is like to check my mindset. Now, the reason why I like to check my mindset is because a lot of the time my problems in trading don't actually stem from errors in technical analysis or lack of fundamental analysis or lack of information. A lot of the time, it's we're in the wrong headspace, and because we're in the wrong headspace, what happens is our emotions cloud our judgment. So we need to make sure that, hey, we're in the right headspace because what if you're upset? What if you're depressed? What if you've had an argument with your significant other and now you want to prove people right, prove people that you can trade or whatever reason? So always make sure you're in a good headspace. If you're upset, if you're sad, even if you're too happy, that's not a good place to be trading from. All right, next thing, all right, are you feeling tired? You know, if you're tired and you're not in a, <laughs> bro, like how are you going to focus? How is your brain going to compute correctly? So don't be tired when you're trading. Make sure that you are in a good mindset. And if you're trading for the sake of trading, you know, when we go to the markets, we're not here like a job expecting to get a paycheck. Our goal as traders is to simply identify if the market is showing us opportunity based on our trading plan. Nothing else. We're not here to trade for the sake of trading. We're not boredom trading. We're not trading to try and pay a certain bill. We're not trying to achieve anything else apart from literally one, two things. A, managing risk, and B, following our plan. That's it. And that obviously leads us to the next one, right? Am I even following my plan to begin with? If you're looking at trades and trading what you think, bro, you're already starting off from a from the not an optimal mindset because our goal, again, is to not predict the market, is to simply follow our plan. All right, have you prepared for your trade? Or are you literally just trying to hop on the market at London or New York Open, trying to scalp there and then? All right, all of my chart work, I know days in advance if there's going to be a trade opportunity coming on that trading session. So, for example, today, I'll be honest with you. No, actually, I'll review that a little bit later because I don't want to give you any, any teasers. But I already know from yesterday and days before in the weekend what is likely to happen today based on my obviously my analysis and my fundamental markups as well um and finally you know have you prepared slash like again if you're not preparing like what, what are you doing like you need to prepare how do you prepare well this is what we're doing here firstly check your mindset then get up to date with fundamentals then analyze the chart all right like too many people they go to me Kira man I'm, I'm struggling trading okay cool Show me some of your trades. Yeah, man, I'm buying or I'm selling, you know, this pair. Okay, well, what fundamental reasons do you have for that currency pair to appreciate in value? Oh, I, I, I don't know, bro. There's a red folder news. Okay, well, what's your red folder news? And like, tell me about it. And they don't know what to say. And this is the thing. If you can't build a narrative into why it makes sense for that currency pair to appreciate in value, and I'm not talking technical reasons. I'm talking fundamental reasons, economic reasons. If you can't decipher that, then unfortunately, you're just kind of gambling. You're not trading from a factual-based methodology. You're just trading based on guesswork. And I say that from experience, right? When I didn't understand fundamental analysis and I didn't prepare for the market, I would use all these different strategies and I'll just go to the market thinking, oh, I've just got this magical strategy. I've got these order blocks, which are trash. And I would think that this is the one thing that's going to make me profitable and change my life. But to be honest with you, that's irrelevant, right? You have to build a narrative when it comes to trading. It's a whole storyline. It's a whole picture that you have to start to build. You know, we can't just go to the market and expect to, you know, a London Open, just take a million trades and be rich. It doesn't work like that. Like, do you really think JP Morgan's top analysts go on London session, wake up at the London Open and just press buy and sell right now based on squiggly lines? Of course not. Right? They build narratives. They understand. They build a case onto why it makes sense for this currency pair to appreciate or depreciate in value. Um, let me catch up with the chat. Yeah, sheesh. I got you, man. I got you guys. I got you. Like, I'm definitely planning to do a lot more lives as well. Um, like, I did have a good setup on TikTok and then they just fucking banned me. <laughs> so we're on YouTube now. Um, uh, bro said you inspired me top on the chart it's just if I bought a little 170 on HFX oh don't get me started about HFX guys <laughs> but that's sick though bro I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad so yeah cool 
Oh, and the final thing, right? Am I preserving capital or just jumping in the market, right? Are you are you addicted to trading, right? Do you have an itch to be in the market or is your goal to preserve capital, right? Trading is a game of defense and offensive, of course, but majority of the time, you've got to be defensive. You've got to protect your capital. Too many of us are just going to the market and just being machine gunners running around and getting hurt a lot, right? It's like in, you've got to be a sniper in this game. What do snipers do? They'll sit there in one area for days, right? And they're going to plan to get that perfect shot. Yeah, they may miss time to time, but they understand that they've got the highest chance of probability for that shot to actually play out because they've prepared. They're not just blindly shooting anything that moves. They're studying, they're collecting data. And that's the same thing you've got to do if you want to be a sniper. Now, let's say, for example, as we're going through that sort of like mindset stuff, and I'm noticing that, you know what, I'm actually a little bit tired today. You know what, I'm actually a little bit upset. I'm actually a little bit frustrated. You know what, like I actually want to make some money. That's not the mindset I'm going to get into the market with. Because any time your objective is to, to not do th these two things, which is A, follow plan and manage risk, you're literally creating a recipe for disaster. So let's kind of get into it then, man. Um, obviously, first things first, all right, I want to get up to date with Forex Factory. You guys should know we have FOMC coming out today. Um, take a look at GBP Chef. We can look at that later, bro. Um, but let me ask you this, bro, right? Fundamentally, what is driving GBP Chef right now? All right, what, what's going on with the Bank of England? And what is going on with the, you know, the Swiss francs? If you can tell me that, and deduce a bias from a fundamental narrative, then we can start looking at the charts. Because if you can't understand what's going on with those central banks and what's going on with their monetary policy, inflation, labor markets, in my opinion, we have no business to look at that chart because it's a very low probable trade. Like for me to trade and look at a pair, I have to understand what is going on with the monetary policy for that currencies. I have to understand what's going on with inflation, right? If I can't deduce those things, I'm not even gonna open the chart. Because that's how I get a directional bias on the chart before I even open it by looking at fundamental analysis. And this is what helps me increase. He said too much data. Okay, you can think it's too much data, bro. But when you actually understand what moves the market, like, do you really think that JP Morgan analysts, Citibank analysts are trading based on technicals? I can tell you for a fact they don't. All right. They, what they do is they run algorithms based on fundamental analysis. Now, if you're looking at Forex Factory, all this data isn't relevant. Right, if you're looking at certain things like manufacturing PMI, right, you're looking at like certain things are not relevant, right? This is why you have to understand key principles and get educated on these subjects, right? The key fundamental data we look at: monetary policy, inflation, right, labor markets, and what is going on with the federal funds rates and the interest rates, because that is going to tell you where the money is going to flow. You've got to follow the money, right? You've got to be able to follow the money, so. How do we begin to follow the money? Well, A, are we risk on or are we risk off? Are investors putting their money, where is investors putting their money? Are they beginning to park it into government bonds? Why are they going to park it into government bonds? If investors are putting their money in the bonds, guess what? That's going to drive stocks down. That's going to drive cryptos down. But if the investors now start to switch onto risk on, what's that going to do? They're going to drive money out of the dollar, drive money out of the bond market and start putting it into where? Stocks cryptos risk assets so you've got to determine this because this is what's going to tell you directional bias the reason why some so many of you are getting absolutely destroyed in these markets is because you're not paying attention to the things that actually matter right fundamentals is the reason and the narrative into why these markets move that is how you trade from market facts if it was as simple as oh just buy enough a trend line then everyone would be profitable now some of you guys don't want to hear that but i'm not here to tell you what you want to hear i'm here to tell you what you need to hear in my journey when I was sold these dreams of, oh, all you got to do is learn this one strategy and you'll be rich. Guess what? I ended up getting fucking scammed by people who didn't know what they were doing. But when I actually started to learn from professionals, I actually started to realize, wait, there's actually more to this than just learning some little basic strategy. I need to learn fundamental analysis, understand what's actually driving the economy. Why is that pair actually going to move? Like, why? if you're looking at an accumulation on the chart, it's all good looking at that accumulation, but what if that accumulation is driven by sellers? Oh, how are you going to know if the accumulation is driven by sellers? Because your fundamental analysis. By looking at fundamentals, that's what tells you the direction before you even open the chart. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, enjoy the HFX, bro. That's it. Um, But yeah, so let's get into it. So for example, like, I'll show you guys. So if we look at, for example, inflation, right? Inflation is one of the most important data pieces that you can get. And today we're going to primarily focus on the US dollar. If we look at US dollar CPI, right? Check this out. Just remember these dates. 
If we go back to March, April, and May of 2021, inflation for the US started to tick up from, you know, that's like when the real tick started to increase. 1.4, 1.7, 2.6. Remember these dates. So if we now go on the DXY, and you don't need any technical analysis for this, right? Fundamentals is what actually drives the market. And we go back to those dates. March, April, May, down here. How convenient is it that the, the low of the DXY was printed as inflation starts to tick up? Then guess what? Check the dates over here. September, all right? Obviously, end of September. What happens at the end of September? End of September, oh, inflation starts to decrease. How convenient is it that inflation starts to decrease and then the dollar starts to fall? But what's happening now? Oh, dollar's rallying. Why is dollar rallying? Because, look, inflation is starting to uptick again. You see, these are the things that drive the market. You know, because what if this, right? If you're not paying attention to fundamentals, how many of you were trying to short off this lower, lower high and lower low? Probably a lot of you. So we've got to understand the fundamental narrative so that we can trade the market facts, right? When it comes to like fundamental analysis, you've got two types. You've got like the quantitative analysis, which is the numbers, the raw facts and figures, which is the most accurate way of understanding what's going on with the economy. Then you've got like, for example, the speeches and what the politicians say. That shit is all bullshit because all these politicians, they're designed to generate liquidity. Now, I can't say too much on here because I'll probably get banned off YouTube, <laughs> but there's a narrative. Look at Jim Cramer, right? Jim Cramer for CNBC. Every single day, this guy puts predictions out there. Every one of them is wrong because he has to generate liquidity. It's how the markets work. It's as literally for every winner, there's a loser. For every loser, there's a winner. There has to be someone on the other side of your trade for you to lose or make money. Who's the other person? The smart money. So by paying attention to the things that actually matter, like the quantitative analysis, inflation rates, monetary policy, federal funds rates, infl again, this data here, that will give you the truest and most accurate depiction of what is going on with the market. Wait, and why am I saying that? Because look, what do we have today? We've got FOMC with a federal funds rate. This is going to set the tone for the direction of the dollar for the next two weeks until inflation comes out. So we've got to pay attention to this stuff. Right, the other thing I'm going to check is earnings reports. Now, and of course, if you guys do have any questions, you're more than welcome to put it in the chat box. I will check, be checking the chat. So yeah, if you want me to look at obviously pairs, um, like obviously my guy, I know you said look at G-Chef, but we've got to have the fundamental narrative. All right, for me, I haven't traded G-Chef in, what, where is G-Chef? I haven't traded G-Chef in a minute, bro. I'm not getting involved with this. Like, why, 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 why not? Because number one, look where we are, right? We're in discount. I'm not selling from discount. We've got rest and liquidity over here. All right, I ain't, I'm a, we don't even have, a, in my opinion, we ain't got anything valid here, All right? GBP Chef has been on my secondary watch list pretty much since oh, this time last year. All right, and this is where you've got to learn to deduce if a currency pair is worth trading or not. And again, it's okay to say you don't know. Like, I'll be honest, man, these pairs here, I don't know what the fuck's going on with them, right? And I could sit here like an amateur and try to force a setup and then take, an, you know, a bunch of losses on it. Or I can just say, you know what, I don't know what they're doing. So I just leave it in my secondary watch list and wait for it to come to key areas. Like Euro GBP. So many people are asking me, Kieran, should we buy or sell Euro GBP? Well, for me, <laughs> I've got conflicting signals, right? I've got a distribution that's been happening since 2016 and an accumulation that's been happening since 2021. So it's like, what's my journal going to say, right? If I start, for example, taking shorts out of this, what's my journal going to say? Oh, well, price accumulated in demand, All right? If I start buying out of this, what's my journal going to say? Oh, we're distributing from supply. So sometimes there's going to be currency pairs that you don't know what they're doing. And it's not a bad thing that you don't know what they're doing, All right? Sometimes there's just no clear market direction. So it's better to stay out of that market rather than getting chopped in, chopped out all the time. So let's kind of catch up with the dollar. So, I mean, in terms of positions I was in last week, I mean, I did have a few longs on the um, on EU. I mean, these were called out on our TikTok live last week. Um, I did hit up my third take profit at a 1 to 35. Um, I've closed majority of volume on this thing now. So, it's, I mean, if she wants to continue up to the final target, you know, and, and come for our 1 to 40, she can. If not, I, I really don't care. You know, I'm happy I've taken my profits. I'm at break even on this. So, I mean, she can do what she wants. Um, 
I mean, looking at what's happening with the dollar right now, we have begun to break some order flow to the upside on this. And obviously we are seeing some crazy divergence on Euro as well. If we take a look at the bonds, government bonds, excuse me, bonds are extremely bullish right now, right? You know, you look at 10 year yield, very, very bullish. Two year yield, very, very bullish, right? You look at the 30 year yield, <laughs> extremely bullish. So realistically, as long as these remain bullish, it's pretty much going to keep, you know, a lot of dollar strength coming in. Um, learning so much. Hey, I'm glad, bro. Um, so you go fundamental first, then combine the technical for entries. Yeah, so fundamentals is going to tell me like where the market is going and why the market is going in that direction. So for example, let's say we're looking at fundamental analysis for New Zealand dollar, right? We know that what drives the New Zealand economy and the Australian economy, well, the biggest like contribute are from the Australian economy is imports and exports with China. R recently, what's been happening with China, China have been clamping down on their imports. So that's meaning less money for the Australian economy. That's why Australian dollar pairs have been melting recently because of the import and exporting. Australia have not been exporting a lot of products to China. So that's why, so with that knowledge there, and again, what's going on with their central banks and their monetary policy, that tells us that the Australian dollar is bearish. So now when I go to, you know, like Australian dollar pairs, like AUD, USD, entity USD, obviously AU and NU correlate. Um, now I already know that that chart is bearish. So all I've got to do now is find, based on my trading plan, the technical entries. So the fundamentals tell me direction and why the market's moving. And then the technicals tell me where and when to actually get in. Let me know if that makes sense. Hey, what's happening, Robert? Um, crazy. RR. Oh, oh, come on, my guy. Bro, I mean, to be honest, that's not even a, that, that much of a crazy RR. Like, if I showed you the pet, the shorts I'm in on Enzo Cad. So, obviously, like, I want you guys to be aware that I do have, like, two different accounts. So, like, I have a swing trading account, for example, on Enzo Cad. This swing trading account, like... It's before I took this short on NCAD, like the last time I was even trying to trade this thing was back in November, right? So it took me about 135 days to get this entry, and I've been holding it since March. Now, this is my swing account, but look at the risk rewards one of them's at 1 to 99, one of them's 1 to 174, and the final is 1 to 200. Where are we? There we go, 1 to 265. Now, that's a swing trade. I've been holding that since March. You might be like, wow, that's crazy RR. I mean, it is. But again, that's a swing trade. Obviously, on my day trading account, I'm not having one to 100s every day on my day trading account. You know, sometimes on my day trading account, you know, I'll, on indices, for example, I'll be taking one to 15s, one to 10s, you know, in and out. But it all depends on what is actually happening on the on the chart. Um, yeah. So can I ask, where do you read the news from that we can also learn from? Yeah, bro. So uh, in terms of the news, so like, understanding the principles and how that all works that's stuff that obviously i do teach in my community um but in terms of like public resources that you can just access to um one website is called bloomberg bloomberg is a very good website normally you have to pay to get access to this but there are some ways you can get it for free if you do want it for free then uh, i don't know if i can say this online but uh you can message me and i can get it for you um but yeah bloomberg is a great source um because this week and then just come on here all right normally if you don't have the thing that I can give you, you only get one article a day, but yeah, just come down to economics, right? And obviously this economics tab is pretty good. Um, every day they do put a, there's a really good article. Where is it? Every day they put an article with like five things you need to know. Here we go. All right. Every day they put this thing here called five things you need to know to start your day. And this kind of tells you like how to stay up to date with the current obviously things. So for example, right today, the fed, what was you talking about earlier? The Federal Reserve and interest rates. I mean, look, if, if if they lower the interest rates, you do realize dollar is going to die. Like, dollar is going to just free fall out of the sky. Um, I don't think they're going to... Obviously, it's not my job to predict. I think probabilities, though, if I just had to put a guess on it, I think they'll pause it. But again, I don't care what they do. I'm just going to react to the price because I've got my if-then scenarios. Um, so yeah, you know, it talks us about the Fed decision, right? What does it say? The Federal Reserve is poised to hold interest rates steady for a second meter late in today, while leaving open the possibility is another hike as soon as December. If they keep, again, how are we going to know they're going to hike? Well, it all depends on what happens with inflation. 
right? If inflation start continues to uptick, they're most likely going to hike. But this is all depends on the data that comes out today and then CPI in the next two weeks. Uh, obviously, Jerome Powell's holding a press conference today. That's going to be interesting to hear what he says. Um, yeah, the two year, yeah, the two year notes have been flying, bro. Like, look at the treasuries. Oh my god, like absolutely insane. This thing's looking crazy bullish, man. Um, so yeah, this is a great place, bro. Um, uh, obviously, U.S. borrowing plan. What's going on here? Well, tre uh, today, event says that the treasury and the Fed, according to Bloomberg's. Give me one sec to read this. Obviously, you guys can read this alongside me too. Um, if you want to message me, bro, you can message me on my Instagram. Um, my Instagram account is instagram.com forward slash ikdavis. Um, I should have put it in the description. But yeah, um, maybe I can put it in the description now. Will it let me? No, I can't edit it now. But um, if you just go on my YouTube, bro, like at the top, on in, like my about section, my Instagram link's on there. Um, let's continue reading this and I'll catch up with the chat. Uh, what's happening? So, borrow plan Wall Street deal expect another round of increases at bonds, US deficits, auction deals, micro trades. I don't really care about that. Um, I don't really care about that. Yeah, obviously that's it, man. Like the the big theme today is obviously FOMC. So you like you can check Forex Factory to know like when these news are going to release, and you only really, only really want to pay attention to the high impact news. To be honest, um, obviously all of this data is not important. Uh, obviously we have got federal funds rate coming out tonight. Um, yeah, Bloomberg's good to stay up to date with different articles. Um, obviously Yahoo Finance as well. I, I like to look for the new, for basically like when I trade indices, you know, like S&P, NASDAQ, Q30, what creates volatility for that is earnings reports. So I only really, really want to be trading indices when we've got earnings reports coming out. You know, if you look from here, right, today we've got 979 earnings reports coming out. So it's going to create a lot of volatility for indices today. Combine that with, with Fed, ooh. Gonna be crazy. Um, so here is my Instagram. I'll just put it in the chat here. It's IK Davis. Message me on there. Um, one sec. Let me catch up with the chat. So can I? Oh uh, yeah, I, I, the boy. I think I helped you. Let me know if I answered your question, bro. About the like sources. Uh, obviously, Market Watch is good. Stay up to date with news um yeah these are the main places like one thing i really like about forex factory is if you don't know what the news is you can just click this little folder and it will have like oh this is none for that one but a lot of the time there'll be like little related stories down here um and you can just kind of read a little bit about it obviously like articles and stuff will be opinion based so don't let that drive your decisions um, just kind of get the information cross-reference and let the raw hard data and facts and figures drive you for your directional biases um yeah um could you please break down one of the trades sure we can bro um what, what do you want me to break down do you want me to break down i think the entity cad trades already done breakdowns on this channel um e we can break down the eu trade we had obviously it hit three of our take profits Unfortunately, it did come shy the fourth one, but I'm still in it. There's still potential for it to come higher. I mean, at this point, I really don't care what happens at this, um, to be honest with you. But, I mean, we can break it down really quickly. I mean, all my trades are based off to pretty much the same thing. You know, we began to break order flow. We have cause and effect because our accumulation, what does it do? It invalidates our redistribution and breaks order flow. Um, obviously, from there, we then reaccumulate again. All right, we can see price began to distribute, price began to accumulate, and then creates that new high from there. All right, so at that point, I just want to see price come back to mitigate our manipulation. You know, a lot of people with fibs, they're going to measure this entire swing. But for me, this is the wrong place to measure. Because why am I going to measure the effect? I want to measure the cause of the move, not the effect. So what I look to do is I measure the manipulation that causes that. 
Um, and then from there, just waiting for pretty if we can see any evidence of accumulation, right? Price comes to our 80%. And as we go to a lower time frame, price gives us a valid accumulation with a beautiful Frankfurt sweep as well. Quite a few people um, got stopped out here. And the reason they got stopped out here is because price didn't validate an accumulation. Like just because price, you know, does this doesn't mean price is in a bullish market, right? That's way too early. You've got to learn how to actually understand what phases you are in your accumulations. You know, like when we broke here, right? Up for this little like break over here and people were buying, we're still in phase B, right? We're still in phase B of the schematic. All right, we had our seller's climax, all mat reactions, secondary test, right? Then secondary test in phase B. So at that point, right, we're not, our schematic's not completed, we're here. So we're not betrayed in that break. Then what happens? We get our spring. He, what happened? If you guys remember what happened at 1.30 on Thursday last week, we had news that come in for our manipulation as our spring. Then we had our sign of strength. And then normally what happened is news will create some sort of manipulation, right? So let's say you've got that news event that obviously supports your bias. It'll create the manipulation. Don't tr worry about trading the actual news event live because you're going to expose your account to things like slippage. What's slippage? Oh my God, slippage is not fun, bro. I lost 25% of my account when I traded Brexit. Like when you put a stop loss in on your broker, it doesn't like guarantee you. One second. I just want to double check something. Um, yeah, my bad. Um, when you put a stop loss in a broker, it doesn't guarantee that your stop loss is going to get filled. It's just a recommendation to your broker to take you out around that area. So what can happen is if you're trading high impact news events at the release, let's say your stop loss is here. Price can fill you all the way down here and gap below your stop loss. And now you will lose way more than what you initially risked. So for me, when I trade news, right, again, I'm looking at the data. Once the data is printed and supports my narrative, then I'll wait for the manipulation, like so. And I'll allow at minimum 30 minutes for the spread and volatility to die down. And then I'll trade the mitigation later on to send it higher. That's one of the easiest ways you can trade news. Um, yeah, 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 I'm glad it could help. Bro said, did Kadchef accumulate? So we can look at Kadchef, but again, what fundamental reason do you have for CAD chef to accumulate right now? What's going on with the Bank of Canada and what's going on with Swiss franc? I mean, for me, I mean, we're pretty much in a bearish market. I mean, I'm like, we could, if anything, well, let me clean this up. Uh, where are we? All right, I mean, right now, we was redistributing, but right now, where are we on the bigger picture? If we zoom out on Kadchef, bro. I mean, we're in a bearish market. Uh, I'd want to see price at least come back up to mitigate this redistro. But where are we on the four hour? Well, we're in the middle of a trading range right now, bro. We're in the middle of a schematic. We don't even have any real manipulation right now. So I would, what I would really want to see on Kadchef, and this is nothing I'll be trading today or even probably this year, a sweep to the low. All right, price to come up, accumulate and bring us up to supply up here and then give us our distro or give us a shakeout, break a new low to confirm a redistro and I'll play the mitigation of that. But right now, bro, like I have no means trying to be there on a lower time frame because where well, we are, bigger picture. Um, you recommended risk off and risk on on your... Uh, TikTok live session yesterday. Could you put, yeah, I got you, bro. Um, oh, you come from TikTok, my guy. <laughs> we got banned on TikTok. <laughs> but so, yeah, this is really important, guys. Um, and this will actually give you guys a lot of breakthroughs. So, understanding the difference between risk on environment and risk off environment is very key because you've got to understand what drives these markets money flow. Where is money flowing and why is money flowing? So, you have two types of sentiments risk on and risk off. Risk on is when you have money leaving the dollar and the bond market and going into risk assets. When you're risk off, money leaves stocks, cryptos, and risk assets and goes into government bonds. Right now, we're technically, well, we're actually in a transitionary period right now, but for the entirety of this year and last year, we've mainly been in a risk off environment. That's why you saw the dollar 
greatly appreciate. And that's why you saw the stock market crash. And that's why you also saw um, cryptos crash. Because the economy was risk off. Money was flowing out of these markets. Why? What drives risk on and risk off? Well, again, that's where you got to look at like monetary policy, inflation rates, data. This is all stuff that I teach in my mentorship. But um, from there, you'll know if you're risk on or risk off. So right now, we're slowly transitioning to risk on, meaning money can start to flow out, but not a lot right now because inflation still to comes a lot lower. Again, it's a transitionary period, right? Just like Wyckoff, the market will never just reverse, right? What it will do is it will take time to accumulate or distribute to turn around. So yeah, I hope that answers your question about the risk on and risk off thing. Um, so you're so nice, appreciate you, man. Um, G A. Again, what's what's your fundamental bias with Bank of England and Australian dollar? Obviously, right now Australian dollar is still pretty bearish because what's going on with the trade. Uh, however, there is some news that potentially could come in the pipeline with China basically getting a stimulus package from their central bank. If China get a stimulus package from their central bank and start printing more money, what is going to happen is that money is going to be used to do what? To import more products from where? From Australia. If they start importing more um, products from Australia, that is going to drive Australian dollar up. But that's only if that comes out. Uh, obviously, Bank of England, you know, inflation rates are still high. Infl um, so there's interest rates. That's why it's still pretty, pretty bullish. Um, so we, I had some nice buys on GA last, well, not last week, mid-month on around the 18th, where I closed majority of my volume at a 1 to 38, and then she ended up coming down after I closed like 90% of the trade. Um, for now on GA, I'm definitely still bullish on it. Um, 100% I'm still bullish on this thing. You know, we're fundamentally, we're bullish, right? We've come into demand, we've accumulated out of it, right? We've also seen price on a lower time frame um now basically if i just zoom out a little bit more we're just we're still in this leg from this low to this high so let me switch the time frames yeah we're still in this leg from here to here so i want to see if price can bring its way to at least this 50 percent and discount here and give me my lower time frame accumulation down here if i can i'll be buying this thing all day long but obviously we're looking at gbp aud so you have to look at gbp NZD. right now gbp NZD is still bullish um but i think ga is a lot cleaner in my opinion i just want to wait for cleaner signs swing can we just trade one pair or any multiple pairs as you have this also depends on the type of trader you want to be so for me again i'm like a swing trader and a day trader so i have two different accounts um i per like you honestly you just gotta experiment bro what works best for you like some you know some people preach just trade into one pair for me that never worked um for the reason why that never worked for me was because i just personally felt like when i was trading one pair i mean to be honest, this was like back in 2017 i wasn't even profitable at this time anyway but just from my experience when i traded one pair i like, always felt like i was missing like so many other moves on other pairs um i mean you could probably argue that i was obviously still a noob at that time but i don't know man. when i was trading just one pair i always kind of felt like if, if price was consolidating you know for like a week or a month you know like i would can end up trying to over trade it when i shouldn't even be trading so for me trading more pairs allowed me to trade from more of an abundant mindset and i can like discern you know for example like if i'm going if i've got if i'm trading all the pairs right i can easily just say you know what this pair is not clear move it to the side but if i'm just trading for example you know, let's say Euro GBP, all right? And it's like, for me, I haven't traded this for a year. Last time I took a trade on this was last October. You know, so it's like, if I'm only trading one pair, you know, you may get into signs where you're never, you're not really taking a lot of trades. Um, and, but obviously, either way, it's all personal preference, man. Everyone's different. Some people prefer just to stick to one currency. Um, some people don't. I would say that if you're a, a swing trader of course you definitely want to be trading more pairs if you're a day trader you could limit it but uh, i again for me you know i prefer trading more pairs bro you just got to try out what, what feels the best for you um german 30 there's not really a like i don't really know what's going on with the german economy bro it's not something i really pay attention to um i mean 
reaccumulated on the higher time frame. Um, it would be nice to see if we could come down here and accumulate. But again, I don't really know what's going on with the fundamentals for this. But it's, it's quite hard. I mean, we're coming into a reload now. It's at premium, so it's lower probability. Obviously, down here for an accumulation is way more probable. Um, it's just too early. I mean, it's way too early to, to, to like say there's any trades for this now. I mean, what we've done now is we've basically just changed character and we've entered phase A of an accumulation potentially. So we are basically, let me just mark this up. Uh, we've had our, we're basically, we've had our selling climax, warm out reaction, secondary test, so pretty early. I mean, on this, I don't think this will give an opportunity for a while, bro. Um, yeah. I mean, it'll be worth seeing if we can get another manipulation for the lows. Price can kind of give us some more evidence of buyers being filled and do something like that. But again, where we are, I would much more prefer price to come a lower on the higher time frames, to be honest with you, bro. I mean, we are in a reaccumulation. We are in a demand. But we just need to see clean evidence of accumulation in there. Um, you need to bring Pips even more. You guys make an awesome team. Sheesh, we do, man. I mean, Pips, Pips, right now, he's just being Pips. He's just enjoying life. Um, you know, like doing doing his thing. I'm probably gonna be seeing Pips around Christmas time. I just gotta wait for some of my visa stuff to get sorted. If I do, I'm gonna create a real in, in real life video with Pips. That'll be lit. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe just spam him on Instagram and say, Pips, <laughs> make some more videos with Kieran and maybe we can get some more out of it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the last video with him. It's funny because he actually sent me that like a year ago. <laughs> um, US 30. Okay, we can look at U30. Um, we'll look at US 30 in a minute. I want to get onto this. Actually, we're sitting all this. Let's go on US 30. So... Obviously, with US 30, you have to understand that it correlates with SPX and NASDAQ, so you have to look at them. Uh, honestly, right now, I mean, where are we? Like, we've got a lot of conflicting signals on this. I think the main thing I'll be doing is waiting for the FOMC today. I mean, we've got this bigger redistribution over here. Uh, I would prefer price to come higher because it could sweep this liquidity. But it all depends if we get a clean distribution in this area because it does have cause and effect right there. Mm, let's have a look. So we've changed character potentially in an early start of a trading range. It's nothing really too clear that I would want to be trading today, especially when we've got FOMC coming out. SPX is still showing some bullish signs. And as I'd probably, this, this is just ugly price action, man. There's really not a lot I've seen on this. Markets are just kind of waiting for FOMC tonight, to be honest with you, man. Um, mm, yeah, this is nothing clean, bro. Because obviously, when you look at U30, you have to look at the indices. I mean, do we have maybe a small buy on SPX? Because SPX did come into higher time frame demand. If we can accumulate there. So we can see if we get any accumulations down here on SPX. And we've got a reaccumulation. You thought it's ugly as fuck though. Um, same with NAS. We can see if we get any small accumulations here. But I wouldn't hold my breath on this. Where we've got FOMC coming out tonight. Um, USDJPY fundamentally, yeah. So USDJPY is not driven by the dollar; it's driven by the Bank of um, Japan. 
right? Bank of Japan have negative interest rates, so they're just devaluing the shit out of their currency. So, again, not even looking at the chart, right? Fundamental analysis. USDJPY is the inverse of the Japanese yen futures. Right now, what's happening with Japanese yen? Bank of Japan, look at that, negative interest rates. That is devaluing the heck out of their currency. That's going to mean we're bearish on Japanese yen. If we're bearish on Japanese yen, we're going to be bullish on USDJPY. So, now we look at USDJPY. Oh, how convenient that USDJPY is bullish. Again, the direction doesn't come from the technicals, guys. The direction comes from the fundamentals. Um, so, in terms of where I could trade this, I mean, this is pretty clean. I mean, we actually got a nice little re here. Yeah. I mean, this would be pretty nice. Got some manipulation in this bitch. Okay. So if UJ can work our way down, get some bias. But I'll be honest, UJ is so elusive, bro. Like, last time I tra got a trade on UJ was May. I wish I held, though. I closed majority of that 1 to 55. Low-key salty about that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's not look at that. <laughs> but, yeah, USDJPY definitely for the buyers, bro. Because um, obviously Bank of Japan is just devaluing the heck out of their currency right now. US dollar has no influence on USDJPY because it's the inverse of the Japanese yen. Um, EuroCAD. Where is EuroCAD for me? We are in supply. We are in supply, but we're just not really seeing any weakness on this thing just yet. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. We come into the fiddy. There's some weakness on you first. We're changing character. So this could be the start of an accumulation. Uh, sorry, distribution. <laughs> Definitely not an accumulation. It could be something like that, but this is nowhere near ready for a trade. I mean, it's looking good, though. I'll upgrade that, but not today. We need to distribute, bro. Like we can, And we still can come higher because we're not even at the 80, and we have to have a little bit of imbalance. So I'd want to see this kind of do something like this. On Eurocad. Um, oh, you love the video. I'm glad you did, guys. <laughs> yeah, we need to spam him to come back. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I mean, I was speaking to him on Instagram the other day. I'm trying to plan out meeting up in UK. I just have to kind of see if my get my passport back from Thai immigration. Um, please create a day in the life of a real profitable trip. You know what? I'm probably gonna butcher your name. Van, Van, Vanitas, I actually was thinking of doing that. Would you guys really want to see that? Like a, a realistic day in the life? Like not not like flexing and all that shit. No, no, no. Like actual like me waking up, pulling a camera, half asleep. Yo, guys, <laughs> this is a day in the life. If you, if you guys want to see that, just let me know in the chat. Um, and I'll definitely get that done for you guys. Um, I did have another video supposed to upload on Sunday, but basically when I was got, went to edit it, turns out the audio just didn't work. Um... So I didn't manage to get it uploaded. So I will get that uploaded this week for you guys. Um, th that video is going to be basically on how ICT stole, stole the Wyckoff method. Um, wait, what? ICT stole Wyckoff? Yep. Yes, he did. I mean, if you want to get into that, that's a whole other can of worms. But um, yeah, but if you guys do want to see the day in the life video, let me know and I'll definitely do like an actual realistic one, not some you know not those fake influencers who go to buy and rent cars no, no no like actual realistic how i structure my days what i do actually how i analyze etc um sorry what about nas so yeah nas honestly the indices are not the cleanest right now bro like they're really not the cleanest we've got a lot of conflicting signals i mean maybe some lower time frame small scalps to the upside but i think spx out of all of them looks the cleanest bro but I'm not like if I do take a trade on this today, I have to see a, a clean accumulation, and it has to happen after New York Stock Exchange open, which is in three hours. Um, and it, I'm not going to risk a lot on this because we've got FOMC tonight. Uh, how can we join your community? I really want to join. Is it a signal chart or one on one? So. I don't really do signals like that, to be honest with you. I mean, sometimes, like, I do send 
okay, guys, I'm looking at this pair for a buy. I'm looking at this pair for a sell. Um, and like I do call some trades here and there, you know, like we called the Euro USD trade last week. Um, and there was a trade on GBP USD as well. I actually didn't manage to take the GBP USD trade, but my students did, which I guess is better for you guys. Um, I mean, yeah, this one was called out. Um, but I'm not a signal provider. Like the main thing I do is actually educate people because I do plan to launch a hedge fund. And once my hedge fund launches, I want traders who trade the same way as me and my firm. So like I do like one-to-one -one teachings on that side of things, but it all really depends on like if it's even a good fit for you because I'm not just trying to bring people in for the sake of it, man. So if you want to be a part of it, like I can't give you a, a certain price because I generally don't know if I can even help you in your situation. Um, so I need to have a conversation with you first, bro, to actually see where you're at and what you need help with. If we have that conversation and it seems like, okay, this is a good plan for you to move forward, a call will figure something out. Um, if you want to be a part of it, bro, just message me on my Instagram account. Uh, my Instagram is, is this. So just I K Davis like that. Um, send me a message on there, bro. And I'll, we'll have a chat and talk about it. Um, Sorry, guys, and catch up with the chat. Uh, what are some currency pairs that move in opposite directions, like DXY and EURUSD um, that you know of? Oh, my guy, Gecko, what's that then? Um, yeah, so USD CAD oil. Um, USD CAD and oil. USD JPY, Japanese yen. Uh, SPX, US 30, and NAS, they move the same way. DXY, EU, gold, silver, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, uh, bond yields and dollar index, NZD, USD, AUD, USD, NCAD, ACAD, uh, GA, GN, HF, NCHF. Uh, bro, I always wanted to ask, if you are trading the main London, New York pairs, you must not sleep because you're in the Thailand. Actually, it's alright, bro. London session starts at like 1.30 for me. Um, yeah, like 1.30pm for me, so that's okay. New York session is 7pm for me, so it's actually okay. I did prefer trading in England, <laughs> a few others of you, but I don't like England. Um, yeah. And like a lot of my trade is alert based trading anyway. And I'm pretty much always done trading after 7 p.m. UK time anyway, which is like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is like 12 my time anyway. And again, like I, I treat trading kind of like a job in a sense where, I mean, not like a job, but you know, like, you know how like, for example, if you finish work at like 7 p.m., right? If it's 7 or 1 p.m. and your manager asks you, oh, can you do this extra thing? You're just not going to do it because it's your shift. Just like if you're coming to the end of your shift, you're going to start kind of preparing to close the shop down or do whatever you've got to do to kind of close up. Same thing in my trading. If it's coming near the end of my trading session, I'm, I'm like my focus is going to start to go away and away and away from the charts because liquidity is dying down. Volumes obviously leaving the market. The only reasons I would enter a trade late New York before like let's say like 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. UK time is if my alerts go off and I've been waiting for a trade. I use a lot of alert based trading, which is how I stay so organized and how I manage all these different currencies. Um, yeah. Yo, guys, can you still see the stream? It said we died. I don't know if we're back. Can, can, can you guys still see the stream? Okay, you can. Okay, sorry. I just come up when I asked Harry to do that, it died. Okay, thank you. Um. Can you share all the Wyckoff schematics? Sure, I actually did a video about this already, bro. Um, my video is already on there. If you just go on my channel and watch this video, go to popular and go to this one. This should be in there. Um, and this one here, the market structure's a lie. That was in my old group. But yeah. Um, obviously, I can still show them here. But, uh, I mean, this one's pretty shit. See that one. But we've got these ones. So, your Acume, your Acume Type 2, your Market Cycle. I mean, obviously, this is, you can just pause it. Your Distro, Distro Type 1, your Re Acumes, and then your Re Distros. 
obviously different types of vacuums, different types of distros. I know it was really quick, but because it's live, you can just go back and uh, pause it. Um, I'm trying to see if we can get a buy on GU, man. Quite a few of my students are in buys from all the way down here. So salty about that. I missed it. So pissed. Um, but I'm just waiting for us to come down to this demand now so we can try to get some buys on this thing. Hmm. When you trade Wyckoff, do you come across different schematics? And if so, can you show us? Yeah. Like you've got type ones, type twos, type threes, type fours. I don't trade type twos anymore uh, just because they're so low probable. Um, but like most of my entries is based off type ones or even type fours. Um, like a type four is like an ascending wedge, basically. So like... Uh, hmm. Like, for example, up here, this is a type 4 distro. And then you play the entry on the mitigation. Um, and then type 1s is basically... Uh, oh, this was disgusting. But, yeah. Like this. The difference between type 1s and 2s. Um, type 1s have a, basically an up thrust and a UTAD. And then type twos just have an up for us. I don't trade type twos anymore. The probability is just so low. And I look at my data, it's just not worth trading them anymore. Um, I want to see if we can get this buy on here today. I am going to be mindful that on GU though, we could be in a larger time frame schematic. So like, if like, that's why I'm not going to like, just take a limit off that. Like I'm going to be mindful that price could do something like this. Could be a one drive, two drive, three drive. So we could, price could always do something like this. It could come in, it could do that, sweep that, and give a sign of strength. So I'm going to be mindful of that on the higher time frame for GE2. I would actually prefer that. Uh, do you have specific times, like a regime you have when you look at the charts? Obviously, it'd be more for day trading, swing trading. Do you check every four hours? So, good question. So in terms of like regimes um, and like how I structure my trading, you got to wait for the day in the life. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That is really simple, bro. Like all of my decisions are based off alerts and organization. So my prep work for today started on the weekend, right? Based on where we are in the week, like if I know, for example, like if I'm looking at a pair, you know, like on, right, hold on, I want to do this. Let's find it. Like UJ, right? Look, look on UJ. We're sitting 130 pips, right? This isn't going to happen. If this is an entry, it's not going to happen right now, today. I know this maybe will happen tomorrow. So it's like, okay, I'm not going to be trading UJ today, but most likely it's going to happen tomorrow. How do we know that? This is just from like, honestly, just having a lot of chart time and like measuring moves and seeing how long it takes for price to move. You know, for example, if we know that, okay, it took UJ, you know, to retrace, 200 pips took four four days to retrace you know this impulse it took uj okay only a day but if that retracement took four days it'll probably take a similar amount of time at the very least to come back down and then it's got a form of accumulation on a lower time frame so this is just understanding time and price like if you're looking at an accumulation on a one minute time frame you know that that can take like two three four five hours to accumulate on a one minute you know so it's like just understanding those time and price and like been measuring schematics so like physically coming in and you know like if we look at this eu buy we had this accumulation took to give well to confirm the entry it took nine hours ten hours you know you look at these little distros obviously they're not ones we're trading but it took five hours you know how long did it actually take price to come back to my poi all right after it broke the high it took price two days and 19 hours you know so it's just paying attention to like how physically in terms of duration how long it took price to do that so what by understanding that that's what's going to help me like start to kind of like plan my like kind of like my life and my days also looking at like obviously liquidity and volume from forex factory 
if we have a lot of red folders, there's probably going to be a lot of moves on that pair. And again, like I said, how I like to trade news a lot of the time is wait for that manipulation from the news event and then trade the mitigation later on or the next day. And again, I'll just like navigate using alerts. Oops. Navigate using alerts. Um, I'll always make sure. Obviously, I live in Asia, so it's like the time zones are a little bit different. You know, London session starts like midday for me. But um, typically, like I'm pretty much every time I open my phone, I'm always looking at the charts. But it's all about having the right watch lists. So I'll have different watch lists, right? I've got like a primary watch list where it's going to be, okay, right, I've identified a point of interest and I'm waiting for price to come there. Like this doesn't require a lot of attention. Uh, I have a secondary watch list, which is like, bruv, I have no clue what price is doing on this. So I'm never going to really look at it. Um, I then have like a lower time frame schematic list where price, I actually need to update this, but um, a lower time frame schematic list where price is actually in my POI. And now it's time to start paying attention to it um because uh, it's potentially forming a schematic i need to actually update this list um yeah and then obviously i have like a little purple list which is just like smaller day trades potentially i need to actually update some of these to be entirely honest but yeah so like understanding where we are in the list you know so for example okay we reconnected i don't know why the signal dropped should be back now. Um, but yeah, just organization, bro. Um, and obviously, it's been on the charts as much as you can. And using alerts. Like, alerts are the best thing, bro. Just trapping price of alerts. Um, like, that's literally one of the best things you can possibly even do. Because you haven't always got to be staring at the chart. You know, setting alerts. And it's like, if my alert hasn't gone off, you know, what else am I going to do? You know, like on GA, right, I've got two alerts. I've got one alert at this high, all right? And one alert in my POI. I ain't going to be trying to trade in the middle and diddle in the middle. I'm just waiting for it to come to my zones. And until then, I'm not going to look at it. You know, like on GA, I mean, I took this trade on the, obviously on the 18th. But since the 18th, I haven't obviously taken profit. But since then, it's been like over a week now. I haven't even been on the chart of GA to try and trade it. You know? Um, what do you see in GBP, JP Warren? What do I see on GBP JPY? There was a nice little buy on it on Monday. I'm definitely bullish on this thing. Um, we can probably get another buy on this bad boy. If she can come down to like 181800 on below. Um, yeah, obviously, like, again, forget the charts, right? Forget the charts. We need a bias first from fundamentals. What's going on with fundamentals? Oh, one second, I'm gonna get centered. There we go. All right, obviously, fundamentals Bank of England, Bank of Japan. What's going on with them? You can't determine what is going on with those currencies, um, those currencies from an economic and fundamental standpoint. Unfortunately, you haven't got business looking at that currency pair. However, what's going on with the Bank of Japan? Negative interest rates, bullish for pairs crossed against Japanese yen. What's going on with the, obviously the pound, Bank of England? Inflation's high, interest rates are high, so we're looking for buys on this thing. Um, we've just confirmed a reaccumulation, which is nice. Obviously, that was a nice little pretty buy on there. Um, and so now it's just she needs to come down on GJ. Come down here. Accumulate. And send it higher. Um... Also, family, I will be going in like 10 minutes because my girlfriend's waiting for me to eat. Um, so if you, I, I'm just going to do Q&A for like 10 minutes. So just spam me with questions, guys. And I'm definitely going to plan to do these lives a lot more frequently as well. Um, you know, like the thing is feedback. If I get positive feedback, I know you guys do like it. But sometimes, honestly, I just forget. So like if you do like it, tell me you like it and I'll do as much more as I can. Um, yeah um how you see market where it is now and where it is likely going one second let me read that one more time um how you see the market where it is now okay where it is now and where it's going so i'm not trying to predict where the market's gonna go that's the first thing bro all i'm do now wait what do you mean you're not trying to predict where the market's gonna go that's how you trade kieran well here's the thing what i do is i have a trading plan 
and I just look at the market to see if my trading plan is presented itself. That's it. That's it. Like, I don't know where the market's going to go, bro. I just do what my plan says. Like, I'm not a genius, bro. I just, I just follow my trading plan, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wish I was a genius. I wish I knew where the market was going to go. I don't know where the market's going to go. And anyone who tells you they know, they're just lying to you. All right. So what I do is I follow my plan, which I've collected data on from thousands of examples since 2016, all right, for what, seven, six, seven years of data collection, or maybe even, how many years now? Yeah, since 2016, all right, I've been collecting data on my strategy. So what I've been doing is I've built up so much confidence in my trading plan, I just look to follow my plan. Like, I'm not trying to predict it, bro. Um, and this is where you have to make sure you've got a completed trading plan. You know, making sure you've got your principles for direction, you're looking at fundamental analysis, you know, you're doing, you've got your validation principles, you've got your invalidation principles, and then I just create if-then scenarios. Like, that's it. It's just if price does that, then I will do this. So, for example, all right, when I was looking at this trade on GJ, all right, it was, okay, it was in, obviously in the middle of a range. If price comes down to my demand zone and accumulates, then I'll take an entry. That was it. And if she just took off from there, I wouldn't have traded it. That was the scenario. And then what does she do? She comes into demand, she accumulates, and we take the entry. So now, what's my if-then scenario? If price comes back down to this demand zone down here, then I will look for a, a buy opportunity on it. That's it. If she, if she does something else, I'm not considering trading it. Oh, I've just missed so many things in the chat. Um, what do you think about EuroHSD? I think it's going down. I mean, what do I think about it? I think it's a nice... I'm joking. I'm, I ain't going to troll. Um, we are going down right now. I mean, I'm actually still in a buy. I've still got some volume left open. I, I've secured majority to trade. So I'm, I don't really care. Obviously, our, technically, our line in the sand is still here. We're still maintaining bullish price action from here. Um, but it all really depends on what FOMC does tonight. I'm Honestly, I think today I'm just going to be kind of sitting on the back of my hands, not trying to take too many trades and just wait for the data. Um, and sometimes, like, you're going to have days. You know, FOMC tonight is literally going to set the tone and direction for the next two weeks. So I'm just going to be waiting for what happens here. Really, bro. Um there's nothing clear on Euro USD for me now. I mean, unless we get a micro accumulation in here, but already looking at it, like we this was the accumulation, right? Why did price come up here and it's failing to break this high now? It's looking like it's favorable to go lower, but again, it's, it's not my job to predict. It's my job to create if-then scenarios to see if my plan is presenting itself. Right now, my plan is not presenting any opportunities, so I'm just honestly not even going to consider it, bro. Um... The only other thing that tickles my fancy is maybe GU, if she can accumulate in this demand zone. But only if she can accumulate. I mean, what are we doing? We're building some liquidity. We could be in a trading range now. Hold up. Change character. Sell this climax, automatic reaction, second retest, up frost, volume, yeah. Oh, we're in the accumulation. One drive, two drive. So we do this, 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 I'm in. Take along that. For GJ. Of G U, not GJ. Um Ah, there you go, Neil. That's it, bro. Organization is everything, man. Um yeah, organize it, like, have, like, plan out your days, bro, you know, like, before you go to sleep at night, um, set an alarm on your phone for, like, every day at, like, 9 p.m. or something to tell you to plan out the next day, and just spend five minutes, bro, two, you know, five minutes, two minutes, go on your notes on your phone, and just plan out what you're going to do the next day, really simple, but really effective, you know, what time are you going to back test, what time are you going to go on the charts, what time are you going to mark up, from there, create your different watch lists of priority, and set your alerts, and let the rep market do the rest. I like the way you look at the market fundamentally before diving into the technicals. You know too much, bro. I wish I knew too much. 
do you uh, have a video on what to know or imperative things to use for fundamentals? Unfortunately, not yet. Um, the only videos I actually have about relative fundamentals are this one here, briefly, and so Ultimate Guide to Smart Money on Wyckoff, and ICT SMC um, is the new retail, and I think I touched on it in here. Definitely these two I touched on it. Where majority of my fundamental analysis is taught is in my mentorship community though. Um, so obviously if you want access to that, let me know and we can figure something out. Please, what are your fib settings? How do you use? It's very simple. It's just 0, 0.8, 1, and 0.5. And I just wait for mitigations, basically. So I just pretty much measure the manipulation, wait for price to come in and mitigate. Um, and then, you know, like I'll pretty much set, so like in terms of entries, um, I just set limit orders off like the 50 and the 80. So like I'll come in, I'll measure the manipulation. All right. And then I can set limits up to 50 and the 80. Like in this case, the 50 wasn't worth it. So the 80 limit was there. And then bing bong, she goes. Um, yes, yeah, so like for example, now right, we're coming into our 50, and, I, and it also shows me where discount and premium is. Like, I ain't gonna be trying to buy above the 50 percent because that's in premium. Now, I want to be buying in discount and obviously selling in premium as well. Um, out of the day in the life, all right, bet we're gonna do one. We're, we're gonna do one. We're gonna do one. It's funny, I was thinking about that, but I just didn't know you guys wanted to actually see that. But oh, no, I know. It's good doing these streams, man. I like talking to you guys. You are the best. We're going to take over the YouTube space, guys. Don't worry about that. And then we're going to throw some in-person events. We'll do some in-person live trading. Like once we get, you know, once we get the community big enough, oh man, we're going to throw some massive events. Like we're going to have like team trips to Thailand where we're all going out. We're going jet skis. We're going partying. Then we're trading, making some money. Then we're going to be, go oh, it's going to be lit. Um, what would you do if you're looking for a Y cough accumulation to occur? As it progresses towards phase C, where is the spring supposed to form? You find that the candlesticks are close together. What do you do in that situation? Zoom out. Like, this is, you know, like for example, for me, I'm not going to be zooming in and looking at this as an accumulation. Like, I need to zoom out. Like, every time frame I'm on, like, price always looks like this, right? I always zoom out to the max every time frame I'm on. I look at the bigger picture. So, like, I like I don't look at like the markets look in higher highs or lows. I look up overall what those higher highs and lows are building, what picture, what narrative are those overall higher highs and lows creating so they can create a schematic. Like I'm not looking at this as, oh, higher high, higher low, break a structure, break to the upside, break to the downside, break to, I'm not looking at it like that. I'm figuring out, okay, oh, it's forming a trading range. Okay, zoom out, break down the phases, you know, phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D, you know. Um, but specifically, like I have a set like list of principles that I go through that actually validate my accumulations in each phase. And basically, if I can't validate phase A, I'm just not going to consider it phase A. If I can't validate phase B, I'm not going to consider it phase B. If I'm not going to validate phase C, I'm not, you know, so. Um, but guys, if you do have any more questions, please send them through because I am planning to finish up soon. So please get your questions in. Um... We love the streams. I love you too, my guy. Um, did you read all of the Wyckoff book to learn this? Or did someone teach you this? Bro, I've done so many courses. I've read so many books. Bro, I've been doing this shit since 2016. So I've learned from a lot of places. But majority of my teachings did come from a few individuals, um, from actual like in-person mentorships that I traveled um, to go to. And like obviously other people I've met on my journey. Um, yeah. I would say like basic wyckoff you know like in terms of like what selling climax is automatic reactions you know like basic stuff like that from books you don't really need mentorship for that you know like there's i've got videos on my channel like if you literally watch this video here this is probably one of the best wyckoff videos you will ever find 
Um, you know, watch this one here, market structure is light. I mean, watch mine, Pips of Persia's got some great videos on it as well. Um, and the rest just from my, obviously like the mentors that I learned, like how to validate if it's an accumulation that's actually driven by buyers or an accumulation that's setting up to create a redistribution. Um, and obviously if it's an accumulation driven by sellers, we're not going to be trying to trade that. So I just learned it from like a lot of places, bro, just over the years. Um, like in terms of like, the basics, yeah. But like the main strategy I use now, yes, I learned off someone. And the reason why I decided to learn off someone, because like I was going down a route where I was trying to create my own strategy and it just wasn't working. Like, And then I had a conversation with someone and they go to me, how are you trying to create your own strategy when you're not profitable? And I was like, that's true. How am I trying to create my own strategy when I'm not even profitable? It doesn't make sense. So I didn't, I just found someone that I liked, I resonate with. Um, and when I liked not only like their strategy, their teachings, it just made sense to me. I also found that I liked them as a person. You know, like the main thing is the person you're learning from, do you enjoy it? You know, like if you're watching someone, um, you know, like a lot of people swear by ICT. Bro, I've, I fell asleep when I watched that guy's videos. No, hey, I mean, if you if you like him, you like him. That's amazing. If he's you know a good YouTuber, that's great. But it all depends if you like that individual because it, it doesn't matter the strategy. Like strategy is irrelevant. That's another thing you've got to realize. It's all down to are you going to stick to that one strategy, learn it all off one person, and then spend enough time to refine that strategy over time. Because uh, like a, a few, quite a few, like I would say like where I trade now, about 30% roughly of... All right, we're back. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know what's going on with this, but um, if anyone knows how to use OBS, please let me know. But um, yeah, when I first got funded with FTMO, I was trading Asia session. Like the actual trade that got me my first payout, it's actually documented on here. <laughs> but yeah, it was an Asian session. So after time, I started to realize, like looking at my journal, that Asia session, I'm not as profitable trading Asia. I was still profitable, but not as profitable as trading London and New York session. So through my own data, I then started to come up with principles to stop trading those sessions and like other principles to invalidate my losses, other principles to validate my winners, which came from just chart time and looking into my journal. So it was like, yes, I, I went through loads of different books, loads of different courses and videos to learn like an overall picture. Then I copied one person's one strategy to refine it and to actually get profitable. Then I dove into my own journal and confined it and consulted with my mentor to actually tweak it and refine it to get to where I am right now. So it's like there's three stages. Maybe that's actually a video idea. So one, I learned all the basics. Then I, number two, I found one person who traded that strategy who I liked, modeled them to the T, didn't de deviate one thing. And then once I got that profitable baseline, then I started to tweak things based on my own trading journal. Um... When did you start seeing consistent profits? 2018. And what I started in 2016, started seeing profits in 2018. Um, what's one thing you'd say put you in that position other than journaling? Of course, education, bro, and mentorship. You know, like when I look back at my journey and when I go from, you know, 2016, 2017, start of 2018, when I was not profitable, just losing trades, jumping from strategy, I never had any guidance. You know, it's like in university, you have a course to follow, you know, in, in work, you have a course to follow in trading. There's no like blueprint that we can follow. So it was like, I was trying to figure it out by myself until I actually got a mentor who gave me a proven blueprint that I could follow. Um, so when I look back at, okay, what changed? It was that it was, I got a mentor. I got access to now new information, which changed my decision-making, which changed my results. Um, yeah, because like with a mentor, the reason I, and again, like I paid bro, like, I pay people over five thousand pounds. I had to fly out to Miami to learn from people for two days, bro. Like I had nothing left in my bank account when I got my into Miami for the first time. Like literally, I had to walk to this guy's crib. It took me three and a half hours to walk to this guy's crib to learn from him. You know. So once I got that mentorship and then started to develop that relationship, I could start. I had someone to look at my trading and tweak things. You know, I was marking up things on the chart, which I thought were correct, but turns out it was completely wrong. Like I was marking up parts of Wyckoff and he was like, bro, that's not even an accumulation there. That's a redistro. And I'm like, oh my God, what an idiot. <laughs> but I didn't know that until I had someone to tell me it. I had like another set of eyes. So when I look back, bro, mentorship is, is honestly one of the biggest things that changed the game. 
Because if it wasn't for mentorship, like I wouldn't have had the mindset. I wouldn't have the strategy. I wouldn't have learned how to journal my trades. I wouldn't have someone to, when I have doubts, message, you know? Um, yeah, mentorship, bro, for sure. Um... um yeah, bro, like, that's it, man. And like, I'll be honest, bro, when I got my first mentor, like, I was scared, bro. Like, I was scared to fuck it. Because I got scammed bare times. Like, I remember there was people, I don't want to name names, but, like, there was people who was throwing, like, these in-person events and, you know, they were claiming that they have made loads of money from trading. And I was excited. So I brought into their services. And I end up, I ask them, like, how do I create a demo account? And they're like, what, what's a demo account? And I'm just like, bro, what? <laughs> You know what I mean? So making sure you've got a mentor, bro. You know, having someone to confide with, to ask questions, um, to review your work, look at what you're doing and making sure it's right. Um, that was one of the biggest changing points in my game. Um, and even like when I actually went full-time trading, and I quit my job. I actually went through like a period where my results started to slip again. And I couldn't figure out why. Like I quit my job, you know, I had money, I was getting withdrawals, but all of a sudden, now my trades is going downhill. I was like, what? What's going on? And I just couldn't figure it out until what? I spoke to my mentor. And that was someone, honestly, like from that point, right? From when I started getting profits and I quit my job, like I stopped talking to him for a while and I realized, fuck, that's why my trading started to fall downhill. So what did I do? Reset, back to basics, consult my mentor and they go to me, Kieran. And like, because they can see things you can't see. So it was like, Kieran, you're not even journaling your trades anymore. You're not conducting fundamental analysis anymore. You're not doing pre-market analysis. Your psychology is all over the place. I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't even see that. So it took someone else to see things in me that I was doing wrong. It's like, even my students now, you know, like they'll be like, yeah, bro, you know, I took a trade and I followed my plan and it hit stop loss. I bet, let's look at it. We review it. That trade doesn't even meet the trade and plan or the criteria. And they're like, what? I didn't even know that. And that's why having a, like a second pair of eyes is important. So to answer your question, that's what helped me, bro. Um, how long did it take to become consistently profitable basically like midway through 2018 um is when i actually started to like get a little bit of traction um and it was just kind of like breaking even coming to 2019 that's when things started to pick up got funded got my first withdrawal and then quit my job um yeah so 2016 2017 2018 like two, three years, roughly. Obviously, there's different levels to it. Um, Eurochef, I mean, where is Eurochef? Bro, Eurochef's in my secondary watch list, bro. I mean, I haven't seen this in a while. Hello. Oh, we didn't break the low. We have a redistro. Hello. See, this is what this is why I like, you know, this is why I do mentorship, you know. One of my guys, Harry, is like, bro, look at Eurochef. I wouldn't even have this on my watch list. My guy. Uh ooh. Off the gap. That is an ugly distro, bro. Ugh. Uh, ooh, Asia. So we can't have any limits on that. It'd have, it would have to give a micro up there. It would have to give a micro. We'll keep an eye on it. But it has to give a micro. Um, I would much more prefer if she like accumulated in here. Come up, mitigate, redistro, break the order flow, and then come back to mitigate like that. And if she did that, that would be game time. Or if she gives the micro up in there. Um, yeah, TikTok banned me, bro. Yeah, I mean, one hour and four hour correlate. Like, again, you got to look, we look at this on the hourly, right? For this price point, 9700 and let's just call it 94170 Like, if I look at this on the hourly, on the four hour, it doesn't change. Like that price point is still the same. So for me, the four hour and the hour are pretty much the same time frames. 
all I'm doing is when I go from a four hour to an hourly is just seeing more data. I've got videos about this, bro. If you wanna, um, if you wanna watch this one, there you go, this one here, secrets of market structure and multiple time frames. Um, I measure the manipulation, JJ. Uh, uh, specific strategy for London, New York. All my strategy is the same, bro. It's all the same thing. Okay, guy. Right. A lot of you want to see the day in the life, so we're gonna do that. Um, if you get a lot, get those questions in because we are gonna wrap up in a sec. Um, do you do? Um. Uh. 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 Yeah, honestly, bro, like, I don't really check my messages a lot. So many people message me. Like, if you want me, if you want to communicate with me, bro, the best thing to do is schedule a call. Like, I don't really go back and forth on DMs like that. If you want to get hold of me, the best thing to do is just schedule a call. Um, uh, and if you want to schedule a call with me, you can just go to on my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is ikdavis, and just go in my bio. There's links. You can schedule calls. Um, uh, hey Kieran, send a question. Um, I'm at the point where you know when you're about to break through and you're just retesting the resistance line and trying to break it to the upside. That's where I'm at in my trading career. Everything I analyze and understand goes in my favor, but sometimes I don't take the trade and just watching it play out. Yeah, the problem is the words of encouragement. Yeah, so the boy with you, what you got to understand is there's three skill sets for trading. You've got technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and psychology. It sounds, it sounds like your technical analysis is solid. It sounds like your technical analysis is solid. So you've got two other areas you've got to look at. So how much work have you put on into fundamental analysis and your trading psychology as you have technicals? You've got to remember, right? We've got two sides of our brain. You've got a left side which is responsible for logic and your technical analysis, and then the right side which is responsible for more of emotions. It's like going to the gym and only training your left arm. If we're going to do bench press and we've only trained our left arm, we're going to be struggling and unbalanced. So with you, bro, if you're finding that all the, you know, the charts you're marking up are working, you're just finding yourself, you know, not taking trades or missing trades or have any psychological errors, the problem is probably not your technicals, bro. Or it could be a fact that you haven't got clear principles to come in and validate your schematics. That's, that could be a, another sign. Do you, how complete is your trading plan? For me, I don't actually have a lot of room for psychology to influence my trading decisions because my trading plan is so thorough. However, take a look at your psychology, bro. You know, if you've spent every day, if you spend an hour on trading and zero minutes on psychology and fundamentals, that's probably the area you've got to focus a little bit more on, my bro. I would recommend watching this video. Um... Where are we? It's called this one. Stop emotionally trading. This video will get you right in terms of psychology, bro. But I would say that you're probably lacking in one of those areas if you're finding that your technicals are good, but you're still having those like problems where you're missing trades, etc. Um, do you think that Wyckoff might eventually get saturated? Like so many people start trading, it won't work. Isaiah, let's let's do some research. Wyckoff, eighteen seventy three. <laughs> Mister Richard Wyckoff was born in the eighteen hundreds. This strategy has literally stood the test of time. So, and like the thing is, the markets won't get saturated because retail traders make up less than five percent of the daily volume. Like retail traders don't move price. What moves price is institutional algos, algorithms that facilitate orders. That's what moves price. It doesn't matter how many people trade a strategy because they don't make up that much volume. So. Um, bro, no joke, I idolize you. Don't idolize me, bro, we're all human, but I appreciate the kind of words. Please help me out, I've been texting for two years. Um, yeah, well, send me a message and let me know exactly what you need help with. Obviously, like, my free content is probably the best stuff to, to watch. 
Um, but obviously, if you want to take it to the next level, then that's where the mentorship can come in, bro. Um, but let me know exactly what you need help with, bro. Um, but I appreciate the kind words, man. Thank you. Do you only use Bloomberg for news or do you have other resources as well? So, I mean, it, it all comes down to my fundamental principles. I mean, Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance, Market Watch, Forex Factory, Investing.com, CNBC, Fox Business. Um, also, like, TikTok and Instagram, bro. Like, what do you mean TikTok and Instagram? Like, especially with crypto, bro. Oh, my God, that's so easy. Because I just look at what market sentiment is doing. You know, like if everyone's buying crypto on TikTok and Instagram, probably probably a sell is coming. If everyone's selling, there's probably a buy coming. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Stephanie, advice on FOMO. Um, FOMO from what? FOMO from what? FOMO from from like missing the trades from strategies from what specifically? FOMO is an emotional, basic like let's go this. You got two sides of your brain, you got left brain and right brain. The problem with traders is they come in and they spend all of their time developing the left brain logic and analysis, and they spend zero time developing their emotional brain with their emotions. If you have any sort of emotional problems, you need to spend more time developing your technical system. Sorry, technical system, your emotions. What what do I mean by emotions? Your belief system, your self, your self-image. Right? Your emotional intelligence, your self-awareness. Watch this video. This video here is literally going to cover all those problems. Stop emotionally trading by mastering the hidden forces. This will get you right. Um and just have a like get a clear trading plan like that that's it you know like if you've got a clear distinct trading plan and you've got clear principles that tell you when to enter and when to exit what you like okay you're, you're fearing now but what are you scared of okay price goes up okay let's entertain it you know like face the thing that you fear okay let's say price goes and misses you then what okay you're not in a trade why why are you upset what are you fearful of you're fearful you didn't make money Okay, so what do you believe then about trading? Do you, are you in a lack mindset or are you in an abundant mindset? You know, abundant, like a lack, okay, here we go. Um, want to get into trades. So why do you always want to get into trades? You've got to unpack it. Why do you always want to get into trades, Stephanie? What belief is causing that? Do you believe that in order for you to make money, you have to take more trades? That was something I used to believe. Why did I believe that? Because that was the belief I brought in from like normal nine to five, where the more hours you work, the more you get paid. So I've had that belief in trading where I thought the more trades I take, the more I make. But there's no correlation with the amount of trades you take and the money you make. I actually have found that there's a negative correlation. So normally the more trades I take, the less money I actually end up making. So the advice for that is question yourself, dive deeper and figure out what belief is lying under that. Why? 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 Like, so when I used to have fear of missing out, I questioned myself, why do I want to be in a trade? Because I want to make money. Why? 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 Why do I feel like I need to trade today? Oh, because I want to pass this challenge. I want to do that. Why do I want to pass this challenge? Because I want to be, I want to make money. Why do I want to make money? Because I want to buy all these things. Why do I want to buy all these things? Because I, I, I want to be happy. Wait, wait, so that means I believe that buying things makes me happy? What? So I started to question it and get to the root cause of it and figuring out what's driving my decisions, what's driving those actions. Because every emotion we have, there's a belief glued to that emotion. So it's what belief do we hold? You know, so you got to, you got to self audit. You got to question yourself. You got to get to the root cause of it. Like there's, there's, there's not going to be a right or wrong answer for this. It's just literally sit down, lock yourself in a room and talk to yourself, man. Like ask yourself, why am I so scared of missing this trade? What, okay, let's say price goes about me. Then what? Okay, I'm not in a trade. So this is where you've got to start to see and question what you believe about successful trading. What do you believe about successful trading? I used to believe successful trading was about winning trades and always being in the market. But that was not a conducive belief. Uh, that belief was not conducive to my success. What I realized is that successful trading is not about always being in the market, not about winning trades. It's about following your plan and managing risk. 
because when you follow your plan and manage risk, the profits will come as a byproduct. So to manage fear of missing out, get a clear and distinct entry criteria, get um, and work on your psychology. You know, like it's, it's good, like you've got an advantage because you're aware of your FOMO. That's good. That's step one. There's three steps to change any problem. Awareness, acceptance and transcendence. Right. Be aware of your problem. You're aware you got fear of missing out. That's a, a, a fantastic. Step two, accept it. I have fear of missing out. Okay. How can I transcend it? The law is the universe. The law of transmutation means that everything's on a continuum. Everything's on the opposite. If you've got one thought, which is negative, which is fear of missing out, what's the opposite of that? You can change that energy into one you desire by focusing on the outcome you want, not getting fear of missing out. You know, what you can do, watch the market go without you. Question yourself, what mindset are you in? Because you've got two mindsets, abundance and scarcity. You're probably in, in the nicest way. You're probably in a scarcity mindset, a lack mindset. Abundant mindsets realize there's opportunities every day. You know, like if I miss a trade, it happens all the time. You know, if you have a week, oh my God, I missed this trade on ADUSD. Bro, I, I was in hospital. Don't worry, I'm okay. But I wasn't at the time, but I was in hospital, right? And I missed this trade on AU. Oh, bro, where is it? Where was it? Where was it? Here, one to 160 I missed on AU. All right, scarcity mindset's gonna be like, fuck, I missed this trade because you're so sucked into the moment, thinking there's no other trades. Abundant mindset elevates your perspective out of the moment and says, you know what? I'm grateful that I have the skills and the ability to get this trade like and mark it up. And I'm, and I'm grateful that there's more opportunities that are gonna come my way. Because you're elevating your perspective out of the moment. Don't be so locked in into one trade. Think in terms of sample sizes. Don't think about one trade. Think about the next 20 trades. I hope that helps. Um, do you trade altcoins? I don't really trade crypto like that, to be honest with you, because, like, honestly, spreads way too high, slippage way too high, commissions way too high. So I just stick to day trade and Forex on leverage. Sometimes I do trade, like, on spot where i just buy and sell cryptos but most of the time with crypto i'm playing the long term game to be honest um limit orders on the 50 and 80 sometimes yeah but most of like sometimes the 50 sometimes the 80 it all depends on what my plan says on that exact scenario um but most of like literally all of my trades are off to 50 and 80 yeah um stephanie let me know if that helped if you want to like have a bit more of an in-depth convo, you're more than welcome to contact me directly. Um, or you can watch this video here, which will definitely help. It's more of a podcast, that one. I would say probably listen to it. Um, if the majority of people said, and would you do the opposite, even if it goes against the trend? It, I mean, it's not that black and white. Like Just because everyone's selling doesn't mean I'm automatically going to start buying. But... I mean, in trading, you do have to bet against the consensus. You know, that's what Ray Dalio taught me. Ray Dalio is one of the large, largest hedge fund founders in the world, um, with Bridgewater Associates. And he talks about betting against the consensus. So a lot of the time, if you're on the side of the majority, you're probably wrong. And you want to be on the side opposite the majority. But it all comes down to your plan and your criteria, to be honest with you. Like, for me, market sentiment is not something that's 100% in my plan. It's just something I notice. So for example, I follow my plan, I follow my principles, follow all my fundamental analysis, and I'll normally find that the masses are doing the opposite to what I'm doing anyway, because that's what my trading is pretty much based on. So it's just like a cherry on the cake. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna, everyone's buying, so I'm automatically gonna sell. No, I need reasons for that, you know? Um, uh, um. Do you show proof of edge in the market? Yeah, bro, of course. I've got verified track records, audited, and everything, my guy. Um, if I didn't, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what do you have to say to someone whose entries are not being tagged in? Um, you're probably not accounting for spread, you know? Like, you have to account for spread. So, like, if I'm going to, for example, set a buy on EU... Right, let's just say this buy here. All right. 
I mean, I'm quite privileged on IC markets. EU spreads like 0.01 pips. But forget this is EU for a second. Let's say spread is two pips, right? I can't have my entry on the 80. My entry needs to be two pips above the 80. So whatever your spread is, you put that, in, like include that on your entry. Um, but there you go. Okay, I'm glad that helped. All right, guys, with that being said, I am going to call it an end for today. Um, if you guys did like this, please, you know, don't, you know, don't be afraid to let me know if you have any like recommendations for videos. I know you guys want to see the day in the life. So we're going to do that a realistic day in the life. Um, and any questions, you know, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm definitely going to go live again very soon. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and you're in my telegram channel. So you get updated when we go live. Um, Dan Chez said one more question. I bet I'll let you put that question in really quickly. Um, but you know, before we go, again, if you do want access to my personal mentorship program, I don't just randomly accept students. I have to speak to you first and see if it's a good fit for you and your specific situation. If it is, hey, we'll have a chat and then we can potentially offer it to you. If you want to know more about that, you can message me on my Instagram at ikdavis and we'll have a chat. Um, where can you find, where can I find your track record? You can message me and ask me for it. Uh, it's not something that like I post online. Um, only time I really give that to people is like if they want me to actually trade their capital and it's over six figures, then in that case, yeah. So if you've got over six figures and you want me to trade it, send me a track. I can send you my track record all day long. Um, Hey, what's going on my guy? Good to see you. But yeah, with that being said, guys, we're going to call it the end of the day. I'm going to get some food and we'll see what FOMC brings us. But with that being said, I'll see you guys at the top from the top because we know the bottom is way too.